everyone. Welcome along to the Mulgrave Country Club. Welcome along to That's Good For Footy. You're a little bit quieter than I, than I thought I'd get when I came out here tonight. I thought you guys are going to be up and about because it's Essendon night. Can we get a little bit of, uh, it's Essendon night. Welcome along to That's Good For Footy. Yeah. A little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. You've got some work to do, table 67. Pick your game up. All right. Um, as I said, welcome to That's Good For Footy. This is where the fans meet the players and the players meet the fans. These shows are for the passionate supporters. This is, uh, this basically gives you a little bit more uh, sense of connection. That's what we want to achieve tonight. Uh, we've got two fabulous boys here for you. We'll get them out here. What do you reckon? Yeah. yeah. Let's meet them. All right. Please welcome to the show our first panellist. He was born on the 3rd of October in 1995. He's played a total of 178 games and he's kicked 55 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2014. When he plays for the Essendon Football Club, he wears the number seven on his back. Could you please welcome to the stage, Zach Merrick. <laughs> You guys are really quiet tonight. They're really quiet. They're a little bit subdued. They're like, uh, they're happy that you've been winning though, so that's why you're all excited. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Hey, mate, good to see you. Nice to have you here. How are you feeling? How's everything going in your world? Yeah, a little bit better the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly helps with yeah. a win on the board, doesn't it? Yeah, all right, let's get our second panellist out here. He was born on the 25th of April in 1994. He's played a total of 166 games. He's kicked 293 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2013 when he plays for the Essendon Football Club. He wears the number 25 on his back. Please welcome to the show, Jake Stringer. <laughs> That's good. You're all wonderful. Thanks, Sarah. That was good. I like that. Um, nice to have you all here, but you've got to get a little bit more vibe. You've got to put your phones down and start doing this, all right, because you can't clap with your phone in your hand. Nice to see you all, though. Yeah, that's better. Thanks, Sam. Hey, Jake, how are you, mate? Nice to see you again. Yes, thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, Zach was just alluding to the fact that things are going quite well for him <laughs> because you've had a couple of wins. Yeah, exactly. It makes life easier going into the club when you've <laughs> had a couple of wins. Um, but, yeah, the good thing is that we were able to beat two really good sides that are going to be there in the pointy end of the season. So, yeah. I mean, it was really disappointing our first half of the season, but um, things are starting to look in the right direction now. Well said, and it keeps the media off your back too. They always seem to be skirting around underneath cars and jumping out from behind bushes around there at, uh, at, um, um, at, at the hangar, which is a little bit frightening sometimes. Um, but what we want to do, we want to get to know you guys a little bit better, but we're going to do it in front of you guys, all right? So that we're going to find out a little bit more about them and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll find out stuff that you've never heard before. Let's do it in our first segment. It's called Who Are You? All right, boys. Um, feel free to just answer these questions as, as we go uh, through them. Uh, jump in any time you like. At school, what sort of a student were you? <laughs> I'm excited to hear Jake's answer here. <laughs> I wasn't a very good one, but I'm okay. honest about it. I left school when I was in year 10, so yeah. I actually went and got a job and worked for three years. So That's all right. That's did it, cool. did it the hard way. Yeah, yeah, the hard way. What about you, Zach? Yeah, I was. Uh, I just enjoyed lunch, lunchtime, recess, and, and PE class, obviously the most. But <laughs> yeah. um, no, I had a had a weird uh, knack and skill of being really fast with my times tables uh, in math. So that was my probably my favourite subject. Ah, oh, interesting. We had uh, who did we have on the other week who actually really loved their maths. Um, what school did you go to, Zach? We go. Yeah, I did it pretty hard in uh, down in Cobden, uh, <laughs> primary school and, and secondary school, and then uh, did it pretty hard at Melbourne Grammar yeah, in my last three yeah, months. Yeah, so. yeah. I was waiting for it. There you go. Yeah. All right. Hey, growing up as a kid, would you catch up with friends after school and have a kick in the park or at the local ground? Was that sort of your routine? Uh, I lived just, just in town. Uh, I had one brother, obviously played for Essendon as well, so yeah. basically I'd just go home and we'd just kick the footy and play sport. All afternoon, wasn't overly social, just sort of spent most of my time with him. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I had two older brothers, so um, after school I used to go with my middle brother who was five years older and him and all his mates would yeah. play down at the hockey ovals, cricket, yeah. footy, 
you name it. They Perfect. British Bulldog, the works. So Great. I used to go along with them and all my mates. So there'd be like 40 kids going at it for until like literally 8 o'clock and then we'd all go have dinner and How cool do is it that? again the next day. This is before iPads, kids. This is what they used to get up to. Uh, fantastic. That's what it was like. That's, what it was. That's the reason I asked that because it's great to know that there was that kind of activity as you were growing up. What was your favourite subject at school? You just alluded to the fact that it was probably mathematics for you. Yeah, probably maths. I mean, obviously PE was, was lo yeah, loads PA, of fun, definitely. but um, yeah, probably maths for me. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't too many I was good at, so... Um, <laughs> what was your favourite one, though? Is it probably just... Woodwork. Yeah? Yeah, I didn't mind woodwork. Give us a... Did you used to make things and take them home and say, hey, Mum, Dad, have a check, check this out? No, I never took them home, but <laughs> I was, used to enjoy going to it. Yeah, that was about it. Um, did you used to dominate at lunchtime in the schoolyard with kick to kick? Were you one of those? Uh, oh, I used to try and play. You know, my brother was, I think, three years older, so I used to try and sneak in with his games, with yeah. his mates, and... Um, I think I learnt the hard way playing with older kids, but Generally. probably held me in good stead uh, when I got to senior footy playing against obviously adults. But yeah. no, nah, I didn't dominate in the school ground. I was uh, running around trying to hide from the older boys that. Got <laughs> yeah, right. What about you, Jake? Uh, no, nah, I was pretty much the same size as my middle brother. So oh. um, yeah, okay. going through primary school and that, I was a bit bigger than all the other kids. So yeah, I used to enjoy playing <laughs> recess and lunchtime. Who did you grow up barracking for, boys? I actually grew up breaking for the Bulldogs, um, so there was a lot of heartbreaking uh, prelims through the yes. 2000s, yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, I don't know why, my, my cousin and one of my mates with Doggy supporters, we jumped on board um, yeah. early 2000s, I think I had a 90, 98 uh, season highlights reel from the Dogs. Oh mate, yeah. 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 Um, I used to put on the VCR and watch on repeat, so yeah. Um, yeah, obviously I was pretty happy that we beat Essendon in uh, 2000 to break <laughs> that, well back then. Um, How was that? Yeah, that was obviously exciting back yeah. then, but now it's obviously uh, hurts a lot of Essendon supporters. But yeah. Um, yeah, I was a big Scott West fan, and then Adam Cooney, and yeah, right. um, yeah, big dogs fan. Not anymore. No, not anymore. I was North Melbourne. Yeah, my oldest brother went for North Melbourne. The rest of my family went for Hawthorne. Really? So I just went with my older brother. Yeah, um, okay. So just stick with yeah, that. Love Shannon Grant. He was my first ever coach in AFL too. My forwards coach. So it yeah, was a right. weird. Good old number six of the Kangaroos. Hey, going back to your first game, you've just been told you're playing this week, OK? Who was the first person you told and what was their reaction? Can you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got the call from Brendan McCartney, right. who was... Uh, he's very rough, very yeah. tough on the edge. And he goes, uh, son, you're in this week and you're going to be the sub. I was like, yeah, you beauty. <laughs> and it's in Adelaide. And Adelaide were flying at the minute. All right. So we get over to Adelaide and then they say, it's raining, like 40 mil, like it's going to be bucketing down. Right. I'm like, yeah, beautiful. So we're literally raining sideways, hailing, <laughs> and I'm sitting in the shed, like freezing with my yellow or the green vest on. We're down by 12 goals and he goes, you ready to go on, mate? I was like, oh. <laughs> So I had to take the vest off and go on for the last quarter and... Ben Rutten was my first ever opponent. Yeah, right. He's my coach now, so... How's that? Yeah. Wow. And who was the first person you told when you got the phone call that you were in? Mum and Dad. Yeah? Yeah, What'd straight they away. They were wrapped. They yeah. would come over to Adelaide, sat and got drenched, and then <laughs> watched me run out there for 15 minutes, and... <laughs> Yeah, that was it. Brilliant. They would have loved you for that. What about you, Zach? What was yours? Yeah, I was, I was actually similar. I was round one my first year. I had Bomber Thompson, so, you know, yeah. interesting time with Bomber, but... Um, I was a sub as well. Uh, I called mum and dad straight away. They were absolutely stoked. Obviously, they've been through yeah. my whole journey, clearly, um, from being, you know, running around when I was eight or nine years old playing Oz Kick uh, to play my first game at Marvel as a sub wow. was pretty special. I think it was yeah. uh, Fletch. I think Fletch broke the record of Simon Madden as well that night, so it was a yeah, pretty right. special moment for the club, and um, we won as well. We beat North Melbourne, which was probably even more special. Absolutely. I like it all. Hey, what was the emotion like when you were actually down in the change rooms for the first time at your first game, and you actually pull on that Essendon jersey? You're not wearing it now as a fan. You're actually wearing it now as a player. What was that emotion like? Can you remember what that was like, how you soaked it up? Yeah, I was, about nine months earlier, I was uh, a fan. Went to Anzac Day and had a like a 2002 Essendon jumper on. Watching my brother play Anzac Day, um, <laughs> so we playing my my first game nine months later. It was uh, pretty surreal. Very surreal. Um, yeah, it was just a lot of nerves, yeah. anxiety. Yeah. You know, I was still in awe of you know Brendan Goddard, Joe Watson, these yeah. you know superstars of the comp. I was yeah. just 
excited to be standing next to those guys and you know, see Fletch obviously, uh, who I think was 40 at the time. Um, it was just amazing to run out with him. Wow. Yeah, I just remember the, the roar of the crowd obviously playing in front of, you know, 50 or 100 people at local footy to go in front of, I think it was 35, 40,000 was pretty that's cool. That's amazing. That's a question that's coming up very shortly, but I'm glad you went to that. Um, what was it like for you? I know that you were playing, your first one was at the Western yep. Bulldogs. I remember we actually, when I actually got you on the show for the first time and you were on the show with North Melbourne's Drew Petrie and you were like, like really quiet. And I was like, I spoke to you at the end of it and I said, Are you, were you okay with doing all that? And you go, mate, I've never done anything like that. And he was like an idol of mine because he was a North Melbourne boy. Yeah, and yeah. As you said, you barrack for the North Melbourne. But what was it like for you slipping on the, the Guernsey for the first time? Yeah, well, obviously um, coming from a small country town called Maryborough. Um, obviously getting that opportunity was something that I dreamed about my whole life. So yeah, yeah. Um, apart from being in the old Amy rooms in um, Adelaide and there's mould everywhere and freezing cold <laughs> and there's puddles in the rooms and yeah. all that type of stuff. It felt like country footy back home. Yeah, so. yeah. But it was amazing. I was the same. Like I was in awe of like getting to watch Adam Cooney, Ryan Griffin, yeah. um, all these guys. So... I was just more excited and I got to be a fan for three quarters and then actually got to run out. So. How brilliant is that? I love that. Um, did you used to collect footy cards at school, both of you? Yeah, I don't know how mum and dad afforded it, to be honest, looking back. Um, yeah. I was pretty needy and, and tried to collect every card. Yeah. So I've got thousands and thousands of cards still at home in the, in the garage. I think mum and dad still collect mine to this How's day. That? Um, yeah, that? Yeah, it was a really, probably my favourite pastime, to be honest, collecting yeah. cards. Um, I used to get so excited to go to the news agency and get a couple of packs. That's brilliant, mate. So, yeah, I certainly have a lot, lot back home. So to follow on from that for you, Zach, and I'll get to you, you with it in a second, Jack, what was it like when you saw yourself on a card for the first time then? Yeah, it was just laugh, to be honest. I think uh, my favourite card growing up was to, I had a Tony Lockett common card and a right. silver card. I could never get the gold, which always pissed me off, to be honest. But, <laughs> um, no, I mean, to see myself and a lot of, you know, when the kids bring up you know, and, like, my card to sign and stuff, it, it still gives me goosebumps. Yeah. Um, you know, I still remember when I was that age yeah. and uh, I think June Bartel signed his card for me, so I know how special it is. Um, yeah. so I make sure I sign as many as I can for the kids. That's brilliant. Um, so what was it like for you? Did you used to collect them at all? Did you have an no, interest in it? No? no, I didn't. I had no. no interest in them, but I was big big into the marbles. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. The nice yeah, big yeah. bot ball. Yeah, the big yeah. marbles, yeah. mate. We used to take them to school because we had like... Cat's eye. I went to a primary school called 404. Okay. And Nicholas Hind actually was in my class. Oh, yeah, right. And um, we used to have these little marbles and set up the circle yeah. and you'd flick it. Flock and, it in. Yep. Yeah, mate, I was the master at it. <laughs> I had that many marbles. I was like the king of the marbles. Yeah. I had heaps of them. So, Brilliant. Yeah, that's I love it. Yeah, I used to love marbles at school too. Um, what was it like for you, though, when you first saw a footy card with you? Mm, oh, I was the name, same. Right? I was like, when someone asked me to sign it, I was like, oh, I don't even know what to do. I don't even... <laughs> so just like... <laughs> quickly gave a little scribble on it yeah. and um yeah it was it's the same though it's surreal like every time you even now like when you look at yourself on a poster and stuff like that it's still you get that yeah oh shit people actually look up to me still yeah, yeah. It's weird. of course we do absolutely hey does everyone in the family barrack for who you play for now or for another team my whole family apart yeah. from like my mum and dad were all Essendon wow and like Essendon Essendon so that was staunch before you got there. Yeah, so then I went to the Bulldogs and a couple of cousins come over, but the rest of them stayed loyal to Essendon. Yeah. So then when I come back, right. they all jump back onto That was like, how cool yeah. is You're here now, you're home. Yeah, right. What was it like for you, Zach? Um, yeah, my nana's uh, a mad Geelong supporter, so right. she changes jumpers depending on who's playing. But <laughs> uh, most of my other family, yeah, they're all, all pretty much Essendon now. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, they remind me. We haven't won a final for a while, but... Um, Hopefully that's around the corner. Yeah, good. Hey, can you remember your first day running um, up the club, right, for training? You turned up to the club for training. Um, what were you thinking? How anxious and nervous were you? I want to go back to, like, that first day when you pulled out at, uh, you know, the, the Witten Oval and you pulling up to the hangar or whether you turned up to Windy Hill. What was the circumstance for you? That first day at training, did you know where to park? Were you, like, going, where do I go? What was the sitch for you? I was petrified. Yeah. I knew no one at the Western Bulldogs. Yeah. I didn't even know any, like, I didn't even know the boys I got drafted with because I was from the country and they were all city boys. I slowly literally rocked up. I was like, I don't know one person. How's that? So, yeah, it was pretty scary and daunting for the Very first daunting. week. And then after that. Yeah. 
And it, after the first day, you were like switched on. You knew exactly where to go, what to do. Yeah, yeah. It was all right after Walking that. into a meeting room at an AFL club is the most daunting thing you will ever do as a football player. Wow. Because every person has a set seat. Yeah. <laughs> and they sit in that seat religiously, so. It's funny because I thought about that when it came to like, you know, sometimes I've gone out to the footy ground and, and I've gone to see a player for a particular reason and I pulled up and they went, oh, no, 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 don't park there. You know, I'm like, why? Oh, that's where Dusty parks. And you're like, oh, all right, I'll go and park over here then. <laughs> you know, that kind of vibe. Um, what, was the, what was the situation like for you when you first turned up? How nervous were you? Were you have moments of trepidation, you know? Like, yeah, I was, I was extremely nervous. I was very fortunate that my brother was already there. Yeah, um, that helps. And that we'd, we'd just moved from Windy Hill out to Tullamarine, so it was sort of all new for everyone in, yeah. in a way. Okay. Um, Obviously not to go back and uh, on the bad times, but obviously Asada was at full flight. So um, for me, day one was a heap of cameras and uh, TV crews all around the <laughs> Tullamarine ground, which oh, I, thought was, that, I thought that was normal for <laughs> AFL clubs. It took probably two years to realise that it wasn't. But <laughs> no, I think day one, I remember getting introduced to all the players. Obviously they trained and then um, doing a cool down stretch. I was partnering with Job. So okay. that was uh, a pretty special first day. I remember going home and thinking that was pretty cool. How cool would that have been? That would it would have uh, put your mind at ease and just said, you know, just relax, mate. You'll be fine. Uh, you're you're here now. Uh, you've made the big time. Well done. Hey, what was the biggest crowd you uh, first played in front of, and how did that feel walking out onto the field? Such so a first game in front of a massive crowd. What was that like? I know you alluded to it before because you came from junior footy. Even you did say that, Jake. But what was it like in front of 60, 70, 80 thousand first time? Yeah, I was a sub my first two games, so as Jake said, I was a fan for three quarters and then yep. um, got to play a quarter of both those games and then got dropped and then my first full game was Anzac Day, um, my oh. first year, so that was, yeah, a bit of a shock um, to go from that to 100,000. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was just first couple of seconds or moments were a bit nerve-wracking looking around and then as soon as the, the game's live, you pre pretty quickly forget about it um, and it feels like another game, to be honest, but um, yeah, it's pretty amazing to look back and think, that I've been able to play in uh, those games. That's obviously the big benefit of, of playing at Essendon. I'm sure your fans enjoy it as well. But as sure. players, we, we don't take any of those games for granted. Yeah. Um, is it something you get used to? Yeah, I honestly don't even realise there's crowds, to be honest. Like, even on the weekend. Yeah. It was pretty loud uh, in Brisbane. I wouldn't have even known that. You're just playing. You're so in tuned and focused yeah. on the footy that you just forget about it, to be honest. Great. Excellent. Great insight. Yeah, I was uh, obviously at the Bulldogs, and we, were, we weren't travelling that well when I got drafted. So... Yeah. It probably took me three years to play in front of a yeah. decent Big crowd. Yeah. Uh, I think it was maybe the elimination final against Adelaide was the first time that I right. actually like, walked out and was like, wow. <laughs> and then I come to Essendon and it was like every second weekend, you're like, wow. <laughs> so um, I always try and tell the first year is like, this isn't normal. Like this is, yeah. this is a privilege to be able to play in front of these people every week. That's brilliant. When you, I know when you talk about the big clubs, you talk about Collingwood, Essendon and, and Richmond, uh, that it is customary. It's not so for you know, players that come from GWS or, or come from you know, any of those uh, lower, lower type clubs in, in that instance. Um, if it was your choice and not the coaches, what position do you think best suits you? Um, yeah, probably just in the middle of what I, what I play. <laughs> yeah. um, pretty well. I'm probably fortunate to, to be able to play pretty much where I want to play. Yeah. Um, what would you do? Don't know. I thought about um, this one with you because I know that when they switch you from down forward or you know around the centre half forward or sometimes on the wing, when you go into the centre, you always get a good clearance and get the bombers going forward. Is that for me to ask you that question? I was always curious. What position do you think does suit you? Yeah, I pretty much just say wherever the coach tells me to go. So <laughs> um, yeah, I think. Having a good balance between midfield and forward is good yeah. for me. Um, I've probably played a bit more forward than I would have liked this year, just purely from injury and not having a good run at it, yeah. but starting to get some continuity now, so hopefully can get a bit more in there. Perfect. Um, was footy the only sport that you ever thought about taking up? Did you have the choices? I know that there was a bit of cricket background with you. Was there a sliding doors moment for you to make a decision between the two sports? Uh, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't so much a sliding doors moment, but um, I think I just was playing a lot of cricket growing up and got bored, to be honest. Um, okay, yeah, right. I think one summer I played about 36 days of cricket out of 50, um, and all my mates were at the beach having fun and socialising, so wow. that, that was sort of the decision that was made. There was no How's real big that? moment. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I was, I'm glad I, <laughs> glad I changed. Yeah, good. What about you, Jake? 
Yeah, I was basketball. Um, so yeah, I got to 15, and then yep. basketball pretty much told me I had to choose between basketball or footy. Wow. So yeah, and ne- then yeah, I chose footy. Yeah, and never been any no, no regrets in that that decision. No, at no, all? no, no, definitely. No, it was not. always what you wanted um, to do. Yeah. Yeah, good. I mean, it would have been lovely to see how far you could have got in yeah. basketball, but I chose to go footy, so... It was funny, we had Luke Jackson on the show the other week and he had uh, a lot of uh, choices to make between basketball and football for him. And then we spoke about, I um, uh, can't remember, his, uh, Dyson Daniels uh, from Benigo. He went over to NBA, signed a contract, um, $7.2 million, which is, you know, First not year. too bad. Um, uh, that's just for a year, which is not too bad. Um, do you watch the footy a lot on TV? Uh, and if you do, do you watch it with the sound up or down? Yeah, I used to be a, a real footy nuffy. I used to watch a lot of footy. Okay. Um, just felt like I, I learned a lot of opposition players and the way teams are playing just by watching watching the footy. Uh, as I've gotten a bit older, I'll probably watch a bit less um, just because I know most of the way the teams play and I've seen most of the players play yeah. for a number of years. So. Yeah. Don't really feel like I need to watch as much, but um, yeah, I probably do a bit of both. I love Friday night footy still. I think that's a great spectacle on TV to be mm. at home. There's a big build up always in Melbourne, which is I think amazing. Um, but sometimes I just watch a quarter and then turn it off or have it on in the background with the volume off yeah, um, cool. and do other things. But yeah, a bit of a mix. Yeah, good. Yeah, so. I'm pretty similar. Um, hardly watch it now unless it's two good teams that mm. I'll maybe sit and watch a little bit. I love rugby league though. Okay, yeah, so you'll so be very keen to see State I of Origin sort of have tonight. The, you know, you do the back on the controls and it just switches back and forth. <laughs> yeah, so I, do, yeah. I do a lot of that. I know yeah, cool. a lot of people, but I, I'll, that's sort of what I do. And State of Origin on tonight, you'll be watching that probably when you get home. Is that an interest of yeah, yours? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully the Queenslanders get up. Yep, yeah, yeah, see how that one goes. Um, outside of AFL, what's your favourite sport to watch? You've just probably alluded to it with rugby. Nah, NBA. NBA, yeah. okay. Or NFL, we're big NFL when that yeah, comes okay. yeah, I'd say NFL. NFL is my favourite sport. I think uh, we do a fantasy league, I guess, um, which gets pretty personal at times. Uh, obviously, some people don't trade. Some guys do. Dodgy um, trades. Yeah, but <laughs> it's pretty big. It's obviously a pretty short season, but um, yeah, I just love the way they do it in America. I think yeah. they promote and celebrate their athletes probably better than anyone else. So, um, yeah, I love watching NFL. And off the back of that, just while we're on that subject, you've probably both been to the States, you get along and go and see the basketball when you're, when you're there, you've done that? Yeah, yeah, I've done basketball and NFL, so I was lucky that Matthew Dover was in Cleveland okay. playing with LeBron James, so he got us tickets to go watch LeBron in Madison Square Garden against How Camelo cool Anthony. That? They put in 45 each, it was awesome. How's that? Must yeah, have been a real timing. eye-opener for you. Brilliant. And Zach, you've Yeah, similar, that? I went and watched... Uh, uh, Big, uh, what did I say? The thing I wanted to do the most was to watch LeBron play live. So I yeah. um, flew over, did this big training trip, um, organised one game. Um, yeah. It was in Cleveland. And LeBron happened to shoot 62 the night before. No way. That night, oh, when he was cooked, I think he went 0 of 13 the first half oh. um, and finished with about 10 points. So it was <laughs> a little bit disappointing. Yeah, but right. uh, it was still cool to say I've seen him play live uh, wow. in Cleveland. Shit, excellent. Hey, have you binge watched anything lately, boys, streaming wise? Uh, Netflix, Stan, Paramount, Disney, uh, you know, whatever it is. Um, and if you are, is there anything that you can recommend? Are you watching anything that way? Peaky Blinders. I just started on the plane up to Brisbane. Okay. Yeah. So season six are in two now. Nah, just, yeah, season one. <laughs> oh, you're just watching <laughs> yeah, it now? Just oh, you just started. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought nah, you'd I'm been just... watching it now. You're. Yeah, right, um, okay. Like right at the yeah, okay, I'm up to season six. I can tell you everything about nah, it. No, all right. Anyway, uh, Zach, what about you? Are you watching? Nah, I'm actually re-watching uh, Suits. I watched it a few oh, years yeah. ago now, yep. but um, it's sort of nice one. You can just sit there and time just seems to go past really quickly. Doesn't it? Um, so I'm enjoying that, though. It's good. Isn't it weird? You can sit there if someone said, oh, I've got a movie for you. It's three hours long, and you go, nah, man, no, no, I'm all right. But then if you're streaming something, you can watch four or five episodes. Yeah. It can go for that time anyway. Uh, quite interesting. If you had a UFC, if you were a UFC fighter or a boxer, would you have an introduction song or a song that would pep you up? Have you got one of those? Anyone? Is there anything that springs to mind for you? I'd play Future Mask Off. Oh, Ooh, interesting. Have we got that, Sam? No, we haven't. Um, interesting, though. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have it. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Zach? Uh, I don't Anything? Know. I'm not, not, big on, uh, not that big on music. Um, no. 
Nothing that Fair gets few you. boys in the club are big on UFC and, and boxing. I'm not as big, but yeah. some of the boys know everyone. All the Come fighters. from a land down under, Zach would play, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, boys, you've been handed a first-class ticket to travel anywhere in the world. Where are you going and why? Where are we going, Zach? I reckon we're... Oh, we are going there, don't we? Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, nah, I'd probably go straight to uh, New York, I reckon. Uh, yeah. I love it over there. I love oh, just getting away and same. Um, just chilling out over there. How, long, how many times have you been there and how long did you go for? Uh, I've been there twice. Yeah. Uh, I went there for a few weeks at each time. Um, Fabulous place. Really, really cool city. Yeah. Um, yeah, and obviously they don't know anything about footy, which is also pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. We walked from uh, First Street up to 117th. Uh, only about 90 odd blocks, but um, mate, you just get lost there. Brilliant, brilliant place. Um, Jake? I'm going straight to Ibiza. <laughs> yeah, really? All right. Yeah. No are turning are, back. No, we actually are going. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah. When's this? Uh, well, it anyway, doesn't matter. Yeah, let's get along with soon-ish. it. Soonish. Uh, yeah, yeah, soon. Soonish. Yeah. At the end of the season after they win the flag. That's what they're saying. Yeah, I get it. Um, do you have that one mate that loves to give you advice about your footy? That one mate that. Mm, you're looking like you do, yeah. Zach. Yeah, probably Devin Smith. Um, <laughs> yeah. he, he does a bit around the bush when he gives you feedback, so yeah. you know where you stand. Yeah. Um, whether that be head coach, captain or first-year player, <laughs> yeah. he tells it pretty straight. So yeah. um, always know after a game how I've gone pretty quickly after a yeah. message from him. Yeah. Um, but he, he actually sees the game pretty well, so I normally can uh, take it from him. Yeah, he's got a good eye for it. Yes, Jake? Uh, I'm in the same boat as yeah. Zach. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, how are you with flying for an interstate game, boys? Pillow, uh, leg room, earphones, headphones? Uh, what's what's the, the go for you? How do you like to travel? I hate flying. Yeah, I right. get sweaty palms and... When the turbulence comes on, I'm like, start panicking. Fasten the seatbelt yeah, sign. Yeah, that's oh, not good no. for me. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, I get the. Yeah, not yeah, good. You're not making Sandy very happy. Yeah, no, but anyway, no. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Zach? How, how, how do I you think like it's changed that? massively. My first year, I think it was, um, you know, obviously the phones were thing, but it was flight mode, no phones put away. I think now. <laughs> If you walk through the aisles, pretty much every player has either phone, iPad, yeah. laptop. Coaches are watching vision of games or yeah. coding the game we've just played. So they're yeah. on their laptop. Wow. There's not much talking. No. Um, everyone's got their headphones on. Yeah. Some boys bring their pillow. I think Draper brings his pillow every time. How's that? Um, and yeah, it's pretty uh, relaxed vibe. On it. Especially because the last few years with COVID, we've had our own flight, Your own flight charter yeah. flight. So yeah, charter flight, guys yeah. will lie down or um, yeah. do their own thing. But yeah, I, I do... Appreciate uh, West Coast and Freo who do all those flights. I think it's yeah. a pretty big effort um, Absolutely. to back it up after games. Yeah, well said. Um, who loves getting their rig out just a little bit too much down at the club? Oh, probably Matt Guelfi, I think. Um, he's obviously a pretty good-looking guy anyway, but he, yeah, he likes getting his, his kid off. Excellent. All right, well, that's, we've got some fans over there for it. Who do you reckon, Jake? Yeah, him and Drapes. Oh, they yeah. live together too, so I hate to know what goes on <laughs> at their house. But <laughs> shenanigans going on there, I reckon. Hey, uh, last couple of questions here, boys. Uh, multiple choice. Just give us the one food um, you shouldn't eat, but it's hard to resist. Maybe if you get a, a, a whiff. KFC, pizza, fish and chips, McDonald's, pasta, a souvlaki, parma and chips, or a sausage and bread with onions. Which, by the way, has gone up to three dollars fifty at Bunnings. Okay. I did see that. I was pretty flat with that, actually. Yeah. Mm. Which one of those? I'm, I'm a massive Palmer fan. Like, I love Palmers. Oh, yeah. Um, probably a bit too much, but growing up in Cobden, country town, yeah. go to the pub, steak or Palmer, I think. Um, obviously, you had a few too many, maybe, but no, it's my guilty pleasure, probably. And do you get upset if the chips are underneath the Palmer? Yeah, don't want any soggy chips. Yeah, good. Excellent. I'm the exact same as Zach. Yeah, good. Yeah, All right. Multiple choice again, boys. Uh, what's the one thing that annoys you mo- the, the most out of these, these things? Waiting in a queue, being stuck in traffic, being put on hold, waiting for a green arrow at a set of traffic lights, a streaming service or internet buffering, or waiting for a microwave to finish? <laughs> We're mad Fortnite gamers. Oh, right. So the internet buffering, buffering like, that's... infuriates me. Yeah, right. I can understand that. You're gonna... Yeah, we're, me and Dev get annoyed because it's his internet that's buffering, not ours. So yeah, it's quite right. frustrating. But <laughs> let's just clarify um, that. Yeah, but uh, no, nah, I, I hate hate lining up in queues for some reason. I just get agitated and yeah. get, get frustrated. I hate yeah. hate waiting. Yeah, I get yeah. it. I hear you. And your last one, boys. You must choose from one of the following. Your partner is giving birth uh, to your first child. You're okay, Jake. 
Um, your best mate is getting married on a yacht in Monte Carlo and he's shouting you an all expenses paid holiday. You're playing in the AFL Grand Final or you've won an Access All Areas Pass to see your favourite band on the planet. Which one are you choosing? What was the trip one? Uh, <laughs> it's uh, your mate's getting married at, uh, on a yacht in Monte Carlo. Yeah, I'm going there. He's going there. I've got four kids, so I don't need to revisit the first one. All right, beautiful. Zach, he's, already got, he's already got a flag and kids, so that's probably easy for him. But no, nah, I, I just want to win a flag. Um, yeah. Hopefully, you guys will be there to celebrate with me. There but, you go. Yeah. That's good. Keep that applause going. Put your hands together with the boys. Well, it is a footy panel show, so we're going to get stuck into uh, this round of football. We're going to talk about it. The boys are going to give a little bit of insight, hopefully give us some uh, tips. We're going to kick it off on Friday night, July the 15th. It's Dogs in 10th position versus the Saints in 9th. It's at 7.50pm. It's at Marvel Stadium. The Dogs lost to the Swans by 53 points. The Swans got off to a fast start, kicking seven goals in the first, and the Doggies' uh, defensive structure was no match for Sydney. Sydney's forwards. Um, Swans now at 10 and 6, Dogs at 8 and 8, looking like they won't play finals this year. The Saints lost by 41 to Frio. It's the one that got away for the Saints. They were winning both centre clearances and contested possession until Frio got on top in the second. Saints could have gone into the top eight with that win, but it was not to be. What do you think here, boys? Dogs versus Saints, Friday night football. 10th versus 9th. I think the Dogs will be fired up after... That lost to Yeah, who they play? City. Sydney, yeah, they were yep. putrid, so yeah. the boys, they'll be fired up. Okay. Yeah, I think they've both sort of been a little bit up and down at times. Some of their yep. best footy for both teams has been probably top four-esque and their bottom stuff's been pretty ordinary, so yep. um, I think it's Jake's their dogs will be fired up, but mm. Saints also got a lot to play for, so uh, I'll probably pick the, the dogs up, Marvel. Yep, okay. Interesting, obviously, uh, Rats has signed on uh, for uh, the coaching role, which is good for him. Uh, some coaches aren't, some coaches are. Saturday, July the 16th, let's go to this game. It's Crows in 15th position versus the Pies in 6th. It's 1.50pm uh, at Adelaide Oval. Crows went down by 32 points to the Hawks. Mitch L uh, Lewis shone with a bag of five. The Pies got across the line in their win against the Kangaroos, but the Roos were a much better outfit than they have been all year. They got out to a 26-point lead at three-quarter time, but then the Pies tackling pressure really lifted in the last quarter for them to come away with a seven point win. What do you think here boys? Crows versus Pies, Adelaide Oval. Yeah, I reckon the Pies. Hey? Collingwood will win. Yeah, yeah I think the Pies are playing uh, them. They're playing a pretty good brand of footy at the moment. I think they've got um, got an ability to, to score quickly but also put a lot of pressure on the opposition yeah. so uh, yeah. I think they'll win that pretty easily. Yeah, okay. Alright, let's go to this one. Um, Giants v Lions. So this is 13th versus 4th. 1.45 at Manicor Oval. The Giants went down by 55 points to Port and only ended up kicking three goals for the whole game. The Lions went down by 10 points to the Bombers. Yeah! I normally do that just to see if you're still awake, you know. Um, you know, that, that was good. Uh, what do you think here, boys? Giants v Lions. Yeah, I think the Giants are playing a lot, lot more freely since uh, yeah. Leon Cameron's obviously left, but yeah. I think the Lions will be pretty keen to bounce back. They've sort of been in and out of form the last two months, probably. Mm. And they'll be pretty keen to get back uh, in shape for finals, so I think they'll win. It's, um, it is strange, though, to see the Giants only kicking three goals for a whole game. That, um, uh, it's not like the conditions weren't uh, very good, but I found that strange. Your tip, though, Jake? Yeah, I'll go the Giants. Giants? OK. Yeah. Let's go to this game then. Uh, Roos v Tigers. Uh, the Tigers in 8th and the Roos in 18th. This game is at 4.35 at Marvel. The Roos, as I spoke about earlier, lost to the Pies. Now they have a new problem to deal with. They've got to find a new coach, David Noble, and the club uh, parting ways yesterday, finishing up even before the review had been completed. The writing was on the wall, though. It was probably in spray paint, I think. Um, but there are some good signs there for someone to come in and take the playing group to the next level. Tigers are coming off an, uh, after the siren loss to the Gold Coast, who were 40 down going into the third, early in the third, only for Noah Anderson to come back and live every footballer's dream. Uh, the Tigers are just inside the eight with nine wins and seven losses. A tip here, boys. Roos v Tigers. Tigers. Tigers? Yeah, the Tigers. Too easy, yeah. you reckon? Yeah. Okay. I thought the Roos were greatly improved um, last week. 
didn't watch a minute of it. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah didn't care. All right, Saturday, July the 16th. This game, it's the Dockers versus the Swans. Dockers in third position, coming up against the Swans in seventh. This game at 5.30 p.m. at Optus. Frio back to playing on their home deck. This will be a re real test for the Swans. Uh, we know a bit more about these teams. We will know a bit more about these teams after the weekend. Dockers smashed the Saints in, an, uh, in the end by 41 points. The Swans also making the Dogs look ordinary in their 53-point win. Dockers v Swans, boys. Yeah, this will be a really good game, I think, being in Perth. Mm. Um, obviously, Dockers are probably a better team at home, but the Swans also travel pretty well, so um, yeah. I'm pretty keen to see who wins this game. I think uh, if I had to go either way, I'd probably go Freo the way they're playing at the moment. I wrote down here that um, uh, obviously we'll know a bit more about both these teams after the weekend. That's a fair, fair statement, isn't it? We will, won't we? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I've got no idea. Who's yeah. going to win? <laughs> I'll say Freo, though. Oh, just because it's over there. If yeah, it was just because it's Sydney, over there. Sydney, I'd probably say the Swans. So 50-50. Yeah. Um, Nate, Nate uh, Fife's coming back and finding some real form um, after his little uh, stint on the sidelines. Uh, this game, this is the Blues versus Cats. Blues in fifth position versus the Cats in first position. 7.25 at the MCG. The first thing I've written here is game of the round, this one. This should be a cracker jacker. Um, mainly because the Cats have to come up and play at the G. Uh, the Blues are doing all right. It'll be good to see how these two go. This will tell us whether the Blues are the real deal and if the Cats are a grand final contender. The Cats are sitting on top of the ladder after their 28-point win over the Demons, and they did this without their big guns firing. The Cats are finding form at the right time of the year. The Blues have been playing some bloody good football and claiming some nice scalps along the way. They came away with a resounding 63-point win over the Eagles. What do you think, boys? Blues versus Cats, MCG. I reckon Zach reckons he likes the Blues, don't you? You reckon they're going all right? I'm going to go Geelong, though. Is it at the... Nicholas, MCG, isn't it? Nicholas. Yeah. I'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll get you up for simply the best. You know everything. That's great. Fantastic. MCG, thank you. Um, sorry, just to go back to it now, who do you think, tips-wise? Tips-wise? Yeah, Cats. Cats, cats and me. And, and yeah, I, just, I think the... Well, that's obviously, it's a big game. I think the the Blues will get themselves up to, to win this, but I think the, the Cats will be focused more on the September than this game, I reckon. Yeah, good. All right, thank you very much. That was nice to be interjected like that. All right, uh, Sunday, July the 17th, this is Hawks versus Eagles. Hawks in 14th position versus Eagles in 17th. 1.10pm at the MCG. Um, Hawks winners over the Crows. Hawks with only five wins from tw for 2022. West Coast with only two wins. What do you think here, boys? Hawthorne versus West Coast at the MCG. Yeah, I'll probably go... I'll go West Coast. West, West Coast? Coast? Are they yeah. yeah, them. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'll go West Coast as well. They've got a lot of senior players back. I know they haven't gelled quite yet, but I think they'll, they'll get the Hawks. Gee, that's interesting. Thanks, boys. I like that. All right. I don't like the Hawks, surely. Yeah, yeah that's mainly the no, reason. Really I get it. I get it. Um, the Demons uh, versus Power. This is second position versus 12. 320 at uh, T.O. Park. Melbourne lost to the Cats, and now they have to travel up north to Traeger Park and Alice Springs to get their season back on track. Power with a nice win over the Giants, sitting at 8-8. Eight and eight. The Demons don't want to drop this one. What do you boys think? Melbourne will be fired up for that. Yeah? They'll be ready to go. Yeah, I think Melbourne's got a fair bit of experience at that. Uh, where is it? In at, at NT? Traeger Park at yeah, Tio, Alice Springs, yeah. It'll be in a slippery ball, but I think they're pretty uh, used to that, those conditions. I think they'll, they'll bounce back. Yeah, cool. Uh, our last game to discuss is the Bombers versus the Suns. We'll, <clears throat> we'll talk about this game in our next segment. It's called Tell Me More. All right, each week we ask the panellists to give their thoughts and opinions on all things in and around football. We're not trying to make or break the news here, we're just trying to get the thoughts and opinions from the players. Let's do it. Uh, this week it's round 18 and it sees 16th place Bombers come up, coming up against the 11th place Gold Coast Suns. Sunday afternoon football at Marvel Stadium, the game kicks off at 4.40pm. Suns have won 8 from 16 and they said at the start of the season their goal was to play uh, finals. This is your chance to crush that dream. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Yeah, get it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I ask this question to a lot of players who appear on the show. What's your favourite ground to play on apart from the MCG? No one ever really see, um, says the Gabba, but it looks like a pool table. It was lush and green. What do you guys actually think of the ground and the surface? At the Gabba? At the Gabba. Yeah, I'm asked about last week's game, but it looks uh, like a really nice ground. Is it? 
a fair bit of it's painted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They paint the grass there, yeah. so yeah. it's um it's a nice deck though, but mm. the cricket pitch in the middle's still pretty Always rock hard in there. Rock hard, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, I had said uh, last week on the show that the Lions are a hard team to beat on their home deck. <laughs> but you guys did it, and it was the Lions' first loss at home all season. <laughs> From the first bounce, the Bombers looked like they were on. Uh, you won the centre clearance and you started streaming forward, but unfortunately, from this passage of play, it wasn't to be. I'm not looking at you here, all right? Um, but you did have repeat entries, which really put the Lions' back line under pressure. The only thing that let you down was your conversion rate. Not that the Lions were much better, mind you. Both teams had their fair share of outs. Brisbane went in without some of their big names in Zorko, Rich and Berry, through injury, as well as McStay and Andrews, plus another four players through the health and safety protocols. Their back six was really tested. The reason I bring all that up, um, because this was common knowledge um, prior to the game, did you guys go in with that being a focus of knowing that if we put their back six under pressure, we've got a good chance here, knowing that they had those outs that they did? Yeah, I mean, you definitely... I mean, the names you named, like Rich, Zorko, Andrews, like they're probably three of the better players in the competition. So sure. um, we knew if we got enough ball that, you know, Peter Wright was going to get a good look, Cole Langford was going to get a good look. Yeah. So we just knew if we, you know, played a good brand of football that we could get the ball in there, would would be all right, would yeah. be able to stack up. Yeah, good. You had Redmond go out due to health and safety, Parrish out with calf issues, plus you're also missing Cox, Francis, Perkins, Smith and Stewart. Um, so it was a good win considering when you put it down to that. The Lions' big guns in Cameron, Danner and Hipwood were all just kept to one goal each, um, which would have been uh, quite pleasing as a result, I imagine. Yeah, it was. I think the, the backs, uh, they're a pretty young group back there, but they're starting to play, you know, and spend more time together and starting to gel better and um, you know, the whole uh, their Brisbane's forward line is probably one of the best in the comp. The six or seven guys up there are all very dangerous. McCarthy, Rayner, the list goes on and on. They've got a really, really strong forward line. So for Absolutely. our young back line to hold up like that was, uh, was really exciting and Hopefully, you know, those six or seven guys that are back there now will be the same guys there in four or five years' time. So um, How good's that? I think it's building together. And that gives good cohesion because the more games that you play together, the more that you understand each other's play and the better you get at, at, uh, at doing that. More positives. I thought Caldwell did a great job shutting down uh, Lockie Neal. Uh, big, t big two metre kicked five. Langford was free to run everywhere. He ended up kicking four as well. And the Bombers are now with three wins from your last four matches, which we alluded to off the top, which puts a little bit of respect respectability... <laughs> Back into what has been a pretty t um, tough season for the club uh, for 2022. Um, surmise that for me. You've had uh, your last three wins. Um, big Peter came out. He's been kicking. He's been a, a, he's a, a great acquisition, but even on top of that, he's giving you a good target. And he's a good kick, you know? I mean... It's a beautiful kick. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the disappointing thing was obviously the first half of the season, mm. but... To be able to get ourselves in a position where we're actually playing a good brand of footy that's stacked up against the Swans and now Brisbane, mm. even though Brisbane had a few out. Um, and then we've got Gold Coast this week who are going really well. Yeah. Um, you know, they're on the brink of finals. So, um, you know, if we can rock up for the next five or six weeks and keep challenging these top teams, um, it's going to hold us in good stead for this young group that we have coming through that... We'll have a big pre-season and get ready to go for next year. You must be excited when you look at it around. Zach, you've been with the club now for a while, but you see all the, the young boys coming through and the talent that they've got and the way that they're emerging. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many of them at the moment. Mm. Um, you know, we're a very, very young group. I think we're the second or third youngest and least games yeah. played. So um, it's not an excuse. It doesn't give you an excuse to not win or not play well or play the right way, um, but it's reality. And... The fact of getting games into these guys now is exciting. I think, and to name a few, Perkins, um, you know, Cox and Reed have been out with injuries, but Perkins, Durham, Hobbs, he's going to be a really good player. Um, you know, starting to build a really good core group that hopefully you know, Jake and I and Shearley and a few other older guys you know, get our reward when those guys are two, three years older and they're the main players, hopefully, in our team that are dominating and A-grade players and we can play our role around those guys. So yeah. 
Um, we've certainly invested a lot of time and energy into them throughout the last couple of years. Um, yeah, we obviously signed on last year, yeah. knowing that that was where we were at as a list. Um, and obviously, we would have loved to have won more games, but we knew that was the reality of the situation. So um, we're fully invested and understand that it's going to take a few more years to get up to the top of the ladder, but um, we're obviously committed to that. Wow. Well said, well spoken. You'd have to agree. It gives you a lot of confidence when you hear that sort of... Um um, and, and it's not just wheeled off, it's not footy talk, it's not uh, saying one week at a time. I uh, saw the interview with you as you came off the ground after the win the other week and you said it's great that the elder statesmen um, that are around at the club, we're all lifting, you know, and we want to show the way for the, the younger guys that are emerging. Um, and that's obviously, you feel that, you believe that. Yeah, I mean, I've got a bit of feedback on that one. Um... I think for me it was more around taking responsibility. I think we actually don't have that many older players out there, so yeah. it's probably directed at four or five of us. But um, no, nah, I mean we obviously I was lucky when I got to the club that I did have those senior players, and I probably mm. had ten or twelve that were twenty-eight plus. We've probably only got two, yeah. um, yep. and I'm only twenty-six. Yeah. A lot of guys aren't that old yet, but that's not really an excuse for to not look after these younger players and give them the best chance to have successful careers individually and as a team. So um, I think we've taken. You know, a lot of that responsibility the last month. Um, it's been a lot of conversations with coaches as well, which has been pretty confronting, but we've, we've had to do that. And hopefully it's got us on the right path together now as a club. And um, yeah, that was sort of what I was alluding to with those, those comments. I want to give the fans a bit more insight rather than yeah. the, the cliches post-win yeah, yeah. and yeah. Um, you know, try and bring the fans along for the journey for the journey, and yeah. feel like they're a part of it as well. Good, good. I know there's no such thing as an easy game of footy. Each game presents new challenges and this one will be no different. Put simply, where do you think this game will be won and lost against the Suns? What's your first thoughts on it, Jake? Yeah, I think it's going to be... It'll come down to the contest. If we can get on yeah. top of them at the contest, we have enough forward power up there to get on top of them and play a quick game at Marvel, which suits us. Marvel yeah. really suits our game. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're, we're lucky that we get to play there and you get to learn how the ground plays where, yeah. unfortunately, they they get to play there like three or four times a year. So yeah. it's actually a fair advantage for us to be able to play it there. Absolutely. I've written down here, players like Ainsworth, Anderson, Miller, uh, Lacocious and Rao are developing into quite talented footballers uh, who know how to find and use the ball effectively. As a playing group, they're finding consistency and cohesion, that one word we use in football a lot, within their game style. There's a real belief in their game plan and their structures, and with Stewie Jew signing on for another two years, there's some real belief in uh, that this team is going places. Final word, I'll give it to you, Zach, uh, your tip and margin. <laughs> I think Jake will kick five, uh, and hopefully we'll win by a few goals. I think they're, they're, they're a super team. I think they're... Yeah. Um, given that they're obviously up on the Gold Coast, don't get a lot of attention. Yeah. Uh, I think people forget how much talent they have on that list. They've got a lot yeah. of, you know, pick one, twos and threes on their mm. list. Jew's obviously a good coach and been there for a number of years. So they know their system inside and out. Um, so there's definitely a, a team that we're going to have to be on. And as Jake said, the game will, I think, purely be won in the contest. Um, who gets more inside 50s out of that contest? So hopefully we get the win, but um, no, it's going to be a hard day. It, really interesting, the, uh, the recirculation of um, players from other sides, like Marbio Child going up from Richmond, Brandon Ellis from Richmond, um, uh, Levi, Levi Casbolt from Carlton, they've been able to re reinvigorate their careers since going up there. Um, that, plus all the young bloods that are around there, maybe that not being in the, the AFL footy bubble that Melbourne creates uh, has given them an opportunity to develop um, probably a little bit quicker. Would that be, would that be an assessment? Or would that be right? Or... No, I just think that a lot of teams, you know, when you've got a young group, you think you've got to keep drafting heaps of talent. Mm. Uh, I think at times, as an industry, we can move on pretty quickly from experienced players, whether that be 24 or 32. Like, yeah. I feel like we're pretty quick to just go back to the draft and get an 18 year old that could be special, could be something, and we, yeah. we discard a lot of experienced, mature players. I think Geelong's a great example of that. They've obviously got a lot of talent, but you know, they're happy to back in their 32, 33 year olds who are playing really good How footy true. to keep playing good footy for a long period of time. So. I'm sure those guys up there have been given some confidence from the coach yep. um, and some backing from the club, and there's no doubt why they're probably playing their career best footy. Wow. If you don't think this guy's your future captain at the uh, Essendon Football Club, um, he's brilliant. I remember... <coughs> I remember the first time I had him on the show, I was just so impressed with, it, with his elocution and the way that he uh, presents himself. He does it each week. He prepares himself to go out there and give his utmost, as does Jake, as do the uh, other players, the other, you know, 19 other players that turn up each week uh, to get out there and play. Uh, all I wanted to do is just allude to the fact that it's great to have a chat with him. I hope you got a little bit more insight and uh, I'd be pretty happy if I was barracking for the Bombers as well. So put your hands together for him. <laughs> 
What we're going to do here, I'm going to introduce a segment. It's called Simply the Best. All right, so you boys will just keep score. We'll see how Glenn and Amanda go down the front here. Uh, Glenn, uh, Jake's going to keep score for you, and Amanda, Zach's going to keep score for you. Uh, they've got their... Um, uh, they're amazing scoring pads in front of them, which they're blown away by. The technology here is su it's something to behold. I can see you wow. all sitting there captivated by it all. All right, uh, let's go with our first question. Are you ready to go, guys? Ready. Yeah. Excellent. How many premierships has your club won? Glenn. Glenn. 15. Uh, did you say 15? 15. Glenn, can you tell me 15 or 16? 1 5, 15. 1 5, no, you'd be wrong. Mm. Amanda, did you, did you want to have a go? We've won 16. You have won 16, oh, yeah. there you go, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Uh, how many grand finals has your team played in? Glenn. Glenn. Uh, 20? No, mm. so it is a round number. Amanda, do you think you know? Just throw something out there. I was going to say 25, but I'll be wrong. No, it was a round number, 30. Mm -hmm. Bad luck. All right. Who was your team's captain? Amanda. Glenn. Amanda. Dyson Happel. Correct. One point. Who wears the number seven at your club? Amanda. Huh? Amanda. Zach Merritt. Correct. Well done. How many members does your club currently have closest to within a thousand? Glenn. Glenn. 66,000? No. Mm -hmm. Amanda. You have 70,000, roughly about 70,000. Is that your final guess, 70,000? 70, yeah. It's 79,536, mm, wow. bad luck. Where did your team finish on the ladder at the end of the home and away season last Am year? Amanda. Amanda. Eight. Correct, eight is correct. How many games did your team win last year at the end of, end of the home and away season? Glenn. Glenn. 13. No. Mm. Jake's getting a bit annoyed up here, mate. <laughs> um, how many do you think it was, Amanda? Was it 12? No, it was 11. Mm. Bad luck to both of you. What year did your team last win a grand final and who did they play? Glenn. Glenn. Uh, 2001. Uh, 2001, did you say, or lost? No. What year did your team last win a grand final and who did they play? 2000. Uh, against Melbourne, it was 135 to 75. Uh, that's nice. Excellent. Probably a bit more than what I asked, but yes, you got the point for it. Congratulations. Um, how many points did you win that grand final by? Glenn. Glenn. 60. Yes, well done. <laughs> All right. Who won the Norm Smith medal in that grand final? Amanda. Amanda. James Hurd. He did. Congratulations. So what are we sitting on? Uh, is that four versus two? All right. Uh, this is for two points. Who was your club's leading goal kicker in 2021? Glenn. And how many goals did they kick? Glenn. Oh, I went early there. It's uh, Peter Wright, uh, 35. I'm going to stop there. No, 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 keep going. Oh. Peter Wright and... Oh, last year, Jake Stringer. OK, nice get-out-of-jail-free card. OK, it was. How many goals? Uh, I'm going to say 98. <laughs> <laughs> i got no idea. <laughs> you would have you you liked that, Jake. <laughs> Uh, it was Jake Stringer. You get one point. Uh, I'll give you an attempt at it, Amanda. You can win a point here. How many goals did he kick? Throw out a number. 16. <laughs> <laughs> you go from one extreme to the other, mate. All right. uh, no, it was 39. Uh, you do get one point, though, Glenn. This is for three points. Player year and votes. Who was the last Essendon player to win a Brownlow medal? What year and how many votes did they poll? Glenn? Yes, Glenn. Uh, Joe Watson? No. Mm. Yes. No. Oh, that's, no. Can we argue? No. <laughs> Not as far as records state. Uh, yeah, well, you can ring the AFL about that one. <laughs> Who do you think it was? Glenn. Okay, Glenn. It was James Hurd. It was. What year and how many votes? Uh, 93... Oh. 96? Yes, correct. And how many votes? Two so far. Uh, 20... 22? One. Oh. Bad luck. You get two points, though. Well done. What are we sitting on? Five versus four. All right. Okay, very close, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very close. 
I'm going to give you, wait until you hear the entirety of the question, because once you hear the question, you'll realise that you needed to wait for the entirety of it. I will give you three Essendon players' names. You have to tell me what their combined jumper numbers add up to. Once you buzz in, we're only going to give you three seconds. If you don't buzz, buzz in with the answer, well, then you'll <laughs> fail. Here we go. Here's your jumper numbers with the players. Tip and Woody. Heppel and McGrath. Go. Who wants to buzz Glenn. in? Glenn. Glenn. 55. Did you say 55, 5, 5? Glenn? Yes, 55. You'd, you'd be wrong. <laughs> Would you like to have a go? Amanda? Yes, Amanda. 67. No. <laughs> 65 was the total. Bad luck to both of you. Three jumper numbers again. What are we sitting on? Five versus four? Ooh, could be a tie here. Uh, Glenn, you could take it out. Here's your three jumper numbers. Darcy Parrish, Devin Smith, Dylan Shield. Glenn. Glenn. Three seconds. Seventeen? Seventeen it is. Yes. You got it. Well done. There you go. Six versus five. We have a winner. You are simply right. the best, Glenn. Back. Well done. See how enthusiastic everyone is? They're wrapped for you, mate. That is bloody wonderful. Hey, congratulations, you won. All right. You are simply the best. Four winning tonight. You get to take home $180 Yamaha earbuds. All right? Wow. Courtesy of Yamaha. Well done. All done. Amanda, you don't go home empty handed. That's good for footy football. Thank you very much. Well done. Thanks for being part of it. All right. Uh, let's introduce it. It's called Cool World. All right, boys. No, no, no particular order. You just blurt it on out. Have you ever Googled yourself? Sadly, yes. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Yep, you both have. So it's a point each, boys. Hear you that? You're off the mark. Is your car worth over $70,000? Definitely not. Definitely not? <laughs> no. Nah. Or it might be. No, it wouldn't be now. No, when you got it. Yeah. Yeah, all right. There's one point. Yep, that's all right. You, you, you actually get to turn it over, Noah. Good boy. Mitchell, you're still on one. Do you have more than three coffees a day? Yep. Yes? yes. That's one point, Noah. I did today. I had four today, which is bad. Oh, four today. Oh, you get a point each for that. Do you watch replays of games that you feature in? Definitely not. Definitely not? Nah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Noah, you get one point. Um, do you have more than one mobile phone that you use on a semi-regular basis? No, I don't. No? Do you? No. <laughs> okay. No. All right, good. Do you rate yourself as either a really good singer or dancer? Good, good dancer. Singer. Oh. Yeah. Well, you can be a good singer. I'm both yeah, surprised right. by that. So you're a good dancer, you're a good singer? I bet it could be fun then. Yeah. yeah, wow. Excellent, I like it. Uh, would you get a hair transplant if you were starting to go bald? Nah, just nah. shave it off. Nah, nah, all gone. All right, okay. So there was uh, a point each for the boys on that previous one. Good. Have you ever said, do you know who I am when lining up to get into a nightclub? He just walks in. <laughs> Everyone knows him. <laughs> I'll he walk in. <laughs> no, I actually haven't. I, I, I've thought about it, but no, I've, I've, my moral compass wouldn't sit right with that one. Okay, good. So is that an answer to no for both of you? You don't really need to, I get it, but... Well, no, yeah, no, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe once or twice. Yeah, all right, uh, we'll get one point, Noah. Um, do you like either your passport or driver's licence photo? My driver's one's not too bad. My passport one's when I was, like, 15, so <laughs> yeah, it's a bit awkward. A bit awkward. Mine, yeah, I'm similar. Mine looks... <laughs> I look chubby and really young. Um, so no, nah, definitely no. No, no, no. No to both those boys. Have you ever fudged a footy story to make it sound better? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, my highlight really isn't as good as his, so I've got to chuck in a few goals every now and yeah, then. Cool. <laughs> so that's what, one point. What was it? Have you ever fudged a footy story to make it sound better? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All the time. Yeah, that's Wait a point each, boys. Yeah, okay. Um, have you ever brought a present for your partner, but it was really for you? Yeah, all the time I get. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. the same all the time. Jeez, they're very confident about that. I like. It. Okay, Two all right. Dogs. That's a point each, boys. Mitchell and Noah. Have you ever regifted a gift that was given to you? 
Nah, I actually have never done that. No? Nah. No, you're adamant? I okay. reckon I might have, yeah. I probably have at some point. All right. Well, Zach said he has, Mitchell. That's one point to you. I need a point. Have you, ever had, have you ever had something that you got or received from the footy club and then gave it to someone as a present? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot, a lot of my mates, Essendon supporters, so uh, yeah. they were very grateful. So Good. Win, win, win. There you go. So uh, a point each to both of you. Have you ever gone anywhere and accidentally or purposely left your wallet at home or in the car? Yeah, I do it all the time, does that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Leave it in my locker. Yeah. The old oh, sorry, yeah, I left yeah. it in my locker. Yeah. Um, I can't remember when I did it, but I did do it once and I didn't live it down. And especially at a footy club, you don't want to be seen as a, uh, someone who keeps your money or doesn't want to pay for other people. Yeah. So you've got to make sure you have your wallet on you at all times. Otherwise, you get uh, stuck with nicknames you don't want. Tyson Apple, um, Mason or Redmond. Mason Redmond. Those two guys in particular. So, Case in point, yeah. I hear you. Have you ever ever pretended to be on the phone to avoid a conversation? Oh, All the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were just going to be so, so excited yeah, about that nah, question yeah. and go, oh, yeah. All the time. Have you ever gone to... That's a point each, boys. Have you ever gone to the movies by yourself? Oh, yeah. 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 What did you watch? I watched Space Jam. By yourself? Yeah, I didn't take any of the kids. No, I haven't. No. Oh, okay. Just one point to you then, Noah. Okay. Someone annoying is talking to you and they have parsley stuck in between their teeth. Do you tell them? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> and I will miss, I will giggle like a child for as long as it's in there as well. Perfect oh, I'd have to tell them, yeah. I guess it, yeah, I'd have to. I'd, I'd be too no, distracted. I'd, yeah. I'd just laugh the whole time <laughs> until they figured it out. All right. One point, Noah. That's brilliant. What's the score? What are we looking at down there? Sandy, you awake? What do we got? Versus eight. Oh, Zach's got to catch up. He's a nice boy, Zach. Okay, all right. Let's see how we go here. Have you ever wrongly received any promotional or sponsors product in the mail or through the club without actually requesting it and then kept it? I had a really weird one one day, actually. It wasn't that long ago. Um, (laughs) I was just at home on my my day off and seen someone chuck something in the the mailbox um, that looked a bit sus. So... Ran out there a bit aggressively, a bit like, what's going on? And he scampered off into his car, and the car flung off. And I was like, what is going on here? I opened the package, and it was a, a paleo diet book, like a full, really thick book about like a, book. a paleo diet, which yeah. I thought was interesting. Um, yeah. So I was waiting for a follow-up response, a call, a message, uh, social media, something to say, enjoy the book. Yeah. And I have no idea where it come from still no, to this No day. idea it's at all. Nine months later, I'm still waiting for wow. this guy. <laughs> Come back. Who's that? Yeah. Maybe Pete Evans from uh, My Kitchen Rules is uh, yeah trying to do something. That's interesting. Uh, Jake, your I had a Culture Kings like hat or something that come in the mail. Yeah. And I said to my partner, I was like, 100, percent I'm keeping this, <laughs> but she wouldn't let me open it, so I had to send it back. I was shattered. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to give him a point each for that. You boys can have that. I like it. Um, do you wash uh, your own car or pay someone else to do it? Uh, I wash my own car. I actually don't mind doing it. Okay. Yep, I got good. one like that's a K down the road, so it's yeah. all right. I'm with you. That's one thing I'm really, really bad with. I'm pretty tidy and neat, but my car, for some reason, I just don't really care about. So yeah. um, I'm happy to pay someone else to do that one. <laughs> I get it. All right. Well, we're going to give a, a point to you actually there, Mitchell. This is your last one, boys. You get upgraded at an event, a restaurant, or a hotel to VIP because someone thinks you are someone that you're not. Do you say anything or you just go along with it? Oh, absolutely not. You roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> I'll pretend I'll whatever they want. I'll oh, do it. I bloody love you, Jake. You're brilliant, mate. Yeah, I think I'd roll with that as well for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Point H. What we finish up with, boys? What we get? Get us a score there. Doesn't matter. You're both winners. Well done. That was great. Good on you, boys. I love it. Um, you, get a, uh, you get to see the boys. You, know, bro, you can give them a high five while you're there. Oh, Knuckles, oh, I like that. Noah, that's yours, mate. There's a That's Good for Footy Beanie. Mitchell, there's a That's Good for Footy Beanie. Thanks for playing along and keeping score. Oh, I like that. It fits well. Excellent. Thanks, boys. Good on you for playing. 
I need to show you the shows that we have got locked away. Next week on the show, 20th of July, we've got from the Hawthorne Football Club, Mitch Lewis and Luke Bruce. Then on the 27th of July, we'll have players from the Western Bulldogs Football Club. I did have a player locked away, but his manager came in and said, e -e, we're not going to do that one right now. Um, so we're going to have to back to the drawing board on that, but we're working on it. Then on the 3rd of August, we've got players from the Colton Football Club. Again, this is all, um, you know, hopeful, fingers crossed. Um, and then Collingwood, Geelong, um, Melbourne and Richmond. If you're purchasing, purchasing your tickets, so you can only get them through the That's Good Footy website, go on to either the links within the post or and you can purchase them through that. Or you can now purchase them at the door. We hope to see you here soon. Um, these shows are recorded live at the Mulgrave Country Club, along with all you fabulous people that come along and get involved in it. All I really want to say is uh, thank you to Sam, my sound guy. He does a wonderful job. Can't do it without him. He's great. And the lovely Sandy. That's it. Yeah, keep doing that. Put your hands together. We really appreciate it. And while you're doing that, put your hands together for Jake Stringer and Zach Merritt. Thanks to both of you boys. Thanks for appearing tonight. Really appreciate it. Um, great to have you here. Good luck on the weekend. Go out and, and uh, dash all hopes of Gold Coast Suns trying to play in the finals. Uh, I'm not meaning that in a facetious way, but it'd be great if you did win and then you guys can keep progressing. It'd be great. Uh, this has been the That's Good Footy panel show. My name's Damien. Thank you, everyone. Cheers and good night. See you soon. Bye. No!